free to unmask. We'll go ahead and call the meeting to order at 637. I'll call it. 637. Yep. Oh, three. Sorry. Just can't tell. It's not digital. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Thanks, Mark. The first item up is select board issues concerns. How about adjustments to the agenda? Yeah, hey, thank you. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? I, I have one thing I'd like to add to Brian's report with regard to all the contracts. This would be consideration of uh, contract. We're putting out the bid cemetery. We have that one on a uh, future agenda, if you don't mind, unless it is urgent right now. Uh, it's not, it's, it's probably just a good idea to get it's on the list. Uh, to get out there. Yep. It's on the list for our next meeting. Okay. Well, thanks for bringing it up. Any other additional items or changes? Yep. I've got the certificate of highway mileage that we need to sign. <clears throat> we'll do that at the top of the list of your admin report, if you don't mind. Sure. Okay. Anything else? Uh, I've got a couple modifications to the planned purchases. So you've each got a supplement for that, but. Uh, okay. It's not really changing the topic. Well, there's a, you've got a little bit more detail on a couple of purchases and a couple that came through today. Okay, we'll get to that one when we get to it, but okay. Yep. Nothing else for new agenda items? No, that's it. Anyone else? Okay. Um, select board issues and concerns. Probably too late. The overweight trucks that have been on the back roads are an issue to the taxpayers of this town and a concern of the general residents of their roads. Mm -hmm. Tough to enforce. But it'd be nice if we had a plan for next year. Is that all is that a lot of the SAP trucks? Is that a concern you're seeing? They would specifically be violating a law, yes. Yeah. Also, that profit goes out of this town. The taxpayers of this town put the bill for it. So it's sap oil, it's heating oil too, right? There's lots it's of different weight limits. It's just a lot of different weight limits. I said overweight trucks. Yep. All right. There's violators, as Mark said, probably sap trucks. Well, we shouldn't speculate, but. Well. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Um, so nothing to do about it at this point, but you're just suggesting next time. Maybe we have a plan in place for next year with the and DOT or something. It, it would be a good idea, I think, to understand what our rights are under that own way, you know, as far as enforcement and who could enforce it. So I think I'm echoing what, what Evan is saying. I guess it would really be useful to, you know, what we to know what we can actually do yeah. about the damage to the roads from over here. More than damage to the roads. They're not possible for some people. Somebody's house catches on fire or somebody needs to get an ambulance up there. Residents of this town could not be served the profits of somebody else that's not paying to fix it. Um, okay, so are we asking Brian to take something away or Brian, do you have a response to this at all? Um, I can ask the, uh, it's the DMV that enforces it. I can ask if they can come make a presentation. Uh, that would be great. I just said by next year. Yeah, plan, yeah I, I don't, think that they'd be able to come anytime soon because I imagine they're flat out with enforcement right now. But during the off season, uh, we've had them come and make presentations at the county level. Uh, I, I imagine they'd come and do it for the select board too. Yeah, but they're not going to enforce our overweight rules. They're only going to enforce on state highways. Uh, they still 
do I believe that it, it's the same enforcement mechanism for uh, for town roads, not just state highways. But I could be wrong about that. I'd have to I'd, I'd have to consult on it. Mark? I'd, I'd be curious to know whether anything to do with maple sugaring falls under ag exemptions. As I recall, ag has some pretty heavy exemptions from just about everything. Okay. Okay, so Brian, you have that as a takeaway. You'll connect with DMV wow. to see if we can get a presentation for us. Yep. When they spread shit. Great. Don't in the spring. They're using the pen. They just run those tanker trucks 20 um, a day. Any other issues or concerns? Nope. Okay. Hearing none, re um, review of invoice and orders. Ready? Allegiance trucks, 3461, Brasso fuels, a total of $922.22 with $461.11 coming from the village. Um, sorry, more than that for them. We have a lot of invoices here. For a total, so the total is twelve thousand five hundred seventy-four dollars and sixty-five cents for all Brasso fuel invoices. Even fuel now is four fifty a gallon. Four fifty, holy moly! Okay, that's the last set of ones we got. That was the last invoice. Yeah. Uh, Rosemary, do you have any idea how that's going to hurt our budget for the remainder of the year? Hopefully, they won't be coming too much longer. Maybe one more time. Mm -hmm. So more heat. Hopefully next fall on we'll different budget season by then. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. But they come usually come about once a week to the town bar. So right now we're open okay shape on our budget line for the year. Yep, so paint or oil. Well, they're at eighty-seven percent without this. Without this delivery, yeah. So we got we're probably overspent. Yeah. Okay. Because we budgeted fourteen and we're at twelve thousand two hundred eighty-two. For the current, for the current year. Yes. But it is, we get separate bills for diesel versus feed fuel. Yeah, well, they're all included in that 12,000 now, it looks like. Because uh, invoice uh, 94335 is for the town diesel tank. Okay. Thank you, Rosemary. City cards um, for miscellaneous expenses, the biggest of which is uh, election expenses for $719, followed by computer support for $190. Everything else is under $50, right, or right around $50. That city card down. Uh, Payment was $1,119.72. Compass Minerals for winter salt, $12,608.85. And we already know we blew that budget line, right? No, we're well short. Oh, we're short on it? Uh, I still could get 200 to be still within the budget. It's like we're going to be really well with everybody. Do you expect an price. increase in the salt price, do you think, for next year? According to what everybody's saying, vendor wise, they're all the fuels are trying to get in that way to raise like the salt floor. So, would it behoove us if we still have flexibility in that budget line? Would it behoove us to stockpile some salt? I was going to make sure that I get, you know, closer to the end of the season. Even Okay, 
Can you hear okay, Eric? Yes, I can. Okay, thanks, Jason. Sounds like we might revisit that topic. Um, let's see, county plumbing and heating for $97.50, half of which you from the village um, for plumbing services. Lisa Cruz, rec equipment, baseball, $159.86. Fisher Auto Parts for cleaner, toggle switch, cap filter, battery, silicone, $449.00. 21 cents. Pond welding supply for cylinders. $35.02. Heather Rodriguez for a futsal refund, $25. Uh, Ingham Library Services, $676.52. Um, some of it, which is with grant funding. Uh, JJ Keller and Associates for OSHA compliance, $988 for safety equipment line. Jack Course for fuel for the Fulcum heat and propane, $286.24. Lamoille North Modified Union, $755,413.27. I hear some choking up here. Is that not in cash or check only? Money? <laughs> Moar uh, supplies for winter parts, a total of $656.20. Priority Express loan payment of $81.88. Simquest supplies, uh, $221.83, half of which came from the village. TD Bank credit card payment of $65.82, and that was for softball expenses. Vermont Green Printing Uniforms for Baseball, Basketball, and Soccer, $1,000.38. Sorry, $1,038. Uh, Village of Johnson Payment for Rail Trail Services for the Trailhead Building, $2,229.74. And was that just materials or was that, did they have a Uh, yeah, we shouldn't. The they were donated later. Materials. Is there any part of that remainder of that project that the board can have to sign off on? It looks like we're spending money already on it. I haven't seen the plan for days two. I can bring in more detailed plan on on it for phase two. Um, If we already paid that, I think there might have been a miscommunication. I was expecting to approve that tonight. We haven't paid it. Okay. Okay, so that was pending approval. This was for a single pool secondary line extension to serve the trailhead building. Um, that's what it's for. Single floor secondary line extension. Back the way I found it because I'll screw up. I don't. The end of the orders. We'll talk about the purchase in a second. Sounds like. Next up. Um, are there any questions on any invoices or orders that we didn't already talk about? Do we need a motion to approve the orders or just sign them? No, we'll just sign them. We'll have everyone sign. Okay, uh, review and approve minutes from March 3rd and 7th. Motion to approve uh, meeting minutes from March 3rd. And March 7th. With the header for item number 14, the brownfield secondary appointment. That's probably a minor detail. Oh, yeah, I think I just. It's just a tiny little thing. Yeah. You know, Donna. Donna's good. I am good. Uh, do we have a second? Second. Motion was for both. Yep. Yeah. We have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, ayes have it. 
Thank you. Thanks, Donna. Making that correction. Um, Treasurer's report and review of an approval of bills, warrants, licenses, and any action items. I forgot something. I need to go downstairs before we finish the meeting for some uh, liquor licenses. Okay. We got two through them down there. Okay. And to date, to budget, we are spent at 58%. 68? 58. 58. 58. And we have received the first installment from Mark Alexander on the uh, Royal Head Trailhead Building. First installment of second phase. Yes. Okay. Okay. We will not be have to having a um, tax abatement hearing because the state has paid that person's taxes mm -hmm. with the grant program from BFHA. All over ahead. So Rosemary, it looks like we're the revenue side of the budget, we're at 95%. Yes. Does so that shows when we bill the taxes? That's not okay. taxes collected, right. taxes billed. And Rosemary, <clears throat> under buildings and grounds maintenance line item, we had budgeted 3000 We spent about 6000 Do we know what the huge overrun was? Probably a multiple of we've had some plumbing issues. You got new toilets. Mm -hmm. That's on the setup and versus um the sidewalk out here would have probably that was I know that was unplanned at least. Yes, the sidewalk, Eric. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Then. Question, Eric. Okay. Um, any other questions? Any questions for Rosemary? Okay, thank you, Rosemary. Jason, how it works. Good work. So, <clears throat> last month we worked with the village guys to patch the bubbles and bounce cars on the asphalt. I kept track of their time that they worked with us because that helped me ask how the people to solve the years. All you guys do that. They pay for it by usually working time. Either they let us use a chipper, one of their guys, why we're chipping trees, or they work with us on doing other things. So that was one of the things that they did with us this month. And uh, I've been working with ATC, which is a company in Barry for the Emshaw train, and to go over working with Emshaw to get the, everything lined up to get it. <laughs> yeah, how's that going? What's the what's the scoop? Uh pretty good. Uh we got six rows left in the wall that uh, we're gonna bring material to, then they'll all be fairly decent until they're a sat truck or an overweight truck carries them up again, I guess. But uh a lot of them have been pretty decent, they've just been Certain spots that have opened up pretty good. Uh, all the material, 50 bolts of material, some from our stockpile, then stuff on um, most of the tomatoes. It looks like I go around and check all the roads tonight, the ones that we haven't gotten to. Since Friday and Monday, we finished. And the remaining ones that we're going to take around 35 loads to finish up what we have. 
Thank you guys for all the extra overtime we're putting in. Yeah. Well, it's not fun. Yeah, and that was one question I had with you guys. I talked earlier on prior meetings about overtime, and we all have a little extra for people because we have two guys. Mark's close, this Mark with Mark, and Alex in like that pool. This week, maybe a couple of 475, 450 in that area. Okay. So those two are the two that are close. Yeah. Yeah. Jacob's got plenty of time to try to do some more uh, for certain things. We still get used to it. You know what we budget for pipeline? Hours wise, uh, like Jason said, it's 600 hours because we budget 300 for overtime for the guys, and we say to shoot for 250. So, I don't know if we're budgeting 700 for part time drawing to be conservative on these. No, we don't, we don't do the same for that. With the the overtime hours, uh, we budget a little bit more because we routinely end up more than the 250 hours, yeah. So, we budget that. We don't routinely end up using the part time help as much. Yeah. We'll probably use them more this year because of the shortage in staff earlier on in the year. Yeah, we didn't mean three guys for a while. He was going to be our fourth guy for a while. Yeah. yeah. And now you can come like the weekend there. He came in and worked 13 hours Sunday. He's a big L. He's still short. So do we need a motion or just let us know? Oh, well, we're like still. He's still got something. My first. Appreciate the heads up. Okay. Any other questions for Jason? Jason, you had a, a discuss with select board items stocking up on, on plastic culverts. Yeah, that was in there. And then me and Brian talked to put together a separate plan for the sport. So it's all remaining on. And I'm sure everybody else knows about this, but um, you had an action item or an upcoming test take down more ash trees. Um, are those trees that are already infected or damaged? No, or? they're not. They're not infected. Yeah. Uh, some of the training programs they said it's best to get them down before they infect. These are the um, worst so ones that were hanging the road, yeah. kind of thing. So, yeah, well, all the runs, ones in our work is what we're attacking. When we have time to do it. Any other questions for Jason? <clears throat> okay, thank you, Jason. Yeah, thanks to the crew. Thanks to yeah. the crew and you and everybody who's putting in that extra time. We all appreciate being able to drive into town or go houses. Okay. Next up, we have uh, racial justice reports. All right. They were not able to make it tonight, but they sent their comments along. Uh, Gave you each one. I don't think I gave myself a, a yeah. copy. Yeah. Don't mind. So the co-chairs, uh, Sophia and Jeff, say we are unable to report in person tonight as the majority of our committee will be attending an open rehearsal of hair at NVU Johnson. Uh, we were approached by director Isaac Eddy to be involved in the production from a community engagement perspective, working together to ensure that the production lands successfully within our community and a healthy dialogue around the issues of sexism, racism, and power dynamics are had. Through our meeting with Isaac, we were also introduced to, uh, Jay, thank you. Uh, you know, last name? Azalea. Uh, director of the Center for Director of the Center for Teaching and Learning at NVU. 
as a background in anti-racism education. They reached out with hopes of becoming involved with the larger Johnson community. And at our last RJSE meeting, we voted unanimously to work with Jay to bring an anti-racist story time to Johnson. We plan on working with the public library to bring the story time to fruition in the warmer weather, which would complete another facet of our uh, rapid response grant. So I don't think I can answer questions especially, but. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. All right. Okay, next up is planned purchases. All right. So we're looking at the supplement that you got. So rather than the one that's in the packet, uh, you should have a supplement. Everybody Does, in the audience, uh, there are extras on the, the table in the middle of the room if you want to Does Eric on. have a copy, an updated copy? No, Eric does not have an updated copy. Okay. I apologize, I'll Eric. No problem. I'm going to take a picture and text it to you, Eric. Yes. Okay. So do we know what the repairs and improvements at Old Mountain Fire Car? It kind of says see attached, but... <clears throat> there was not an attachment for that. All right. Uh, these are the old mill park improvements. These are focused around uh, primarily repairing the damage done to the uh, done to the soccer fields uh, at the end of last year. Uh, this also includes some work on the ring trail um, and work on. Do you remember what the third location is, Jason? New yeah. site. <clears throat> Thank you. It's a, the preparation for the playground that's going in. It's three separate projects, but since they're all kind of in one area and it totals up to a little more than $1,000, we felt most comfortable bringing it before the board rather than treating it as three individual invoices. Um, we got a quote. We've, uh, we've reached out to a couple individuals with uh, the necessary equipment. Uh, only one has responded with interest and given us a quote of $1,215 for all three parts of that project. How long ago did we reach out? I, I, I couldn't tell you exactly, but Lisa's been working on this for you know a month or two. Plenty of time that if somebody was interested, they could have gotten back to us. Uh, it is... Uh, the, the individual who responded uh, has done a lot of work with the town uh, around the skate park and helping with the pump track and uh, some of the dirt bike parts that we have over there. So uh, it's kind of gay. Uh, is it Robert? I, I can't remember his first name. Ray. Ray. Thanks. Um, yeah, uh, so will if we have a, another option uh, before we execute this we would consider it but we will spend no more than one thousand two hundred and fifteen dollars on the project okay all right and this is and this is in their budget like this is yeah easily within the budget they have today it's i don't know if i'd say easily but uh it is within their their the rec committee's budget uh, the, the damage obviously was unplanned and pretty extensive. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, they're at, 50, they're at 58% right now for the rec budget. Okay. Yeah, yeah that, I, like I said, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's easily. There might be some other projects that either don't get done later in the year or get modified. Okay, do we need a motion? Um, do you want to handle it one at a time, or do you want to do the, the group? The whole thing? Yeah, let's do I'll the whole thing. I'll say one at a time. Okay. And I, I say don't do care. Do you have a preference? <laughs> okay, let's, let's do them all together, and we all can right. make an exception if there's only one to pull out of the pack. Okay. About that. Uh, the next up, we have the... Quotes, and I, I apologize that the, the quotes weren't attached, um, but we've gone out for 
uh, bike repair station. Uh, this is within the budgeted amount planned for the Welcome Center. This is, um, I'm to say it's about $80 less than we had planned on spending on the uh, bike repair station at, at the Welcome Center. We haven't really seen an updated plan or financial planning or anything for this. We're just really only really spending $2,200 for the village and $1,500 here. I'd like to see an updated analysis here because it was done that way for the whole first phase. Yep. Second phase. I can bring that back for you, and I apologize. I hadn't. No, made the board aware aware of it. We are working from a budgeted plan. I had that but I haven't seen the budget plan. The original budget plan was fourteen thousand four hundred. And then the taxpayers approved the budget with five thousand dollars of taxpayers money, but the donor gave fifteen thousand dollars. So did that fourteen thousand four hundred or are we sticking there? Or did the other people involved in this project stretch it to 20 and they're assuming they can already spend that. Uh, none of the, none of the money has been spent yet. And they're right now we're still working within the the budgeted amount. We're working within the old budget. So yes. that additional budget amount was for the next budget year that was just passed at town meeting. Yes. Um, and also Rosemary just talked about getting a first installment too. So there is cash on phase two that we have in hand. And also the additional budgeted amount that was approved by taxpayers goes toward our next fiscal year beginning in July. Right. I guess my point is, are we planning on spending that already? Is or there a plan? Just to going by the original budget and hopefully able to cover overages if the same scenario happens again. Yes, that is a, a fair description of this. The, 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 the planning for the projects and their costs, we're working from the, I believe it was the $14,400. I don't have the, that in front of me, so I'm, I'm hesitant to quote it exactly, but roughly $15,000 plan for, for the Welcome Center. Um, so far, the quotes that we've looked into on this haven't changed in price. Like the, the bike repair station being one of them that we've selected a model uh, that's coming in a little bit under budget. Um, All right, thanks. So for clarity's sake, are these items um, what you're recommending that we spend in that current year budget or in in the next? current year budget okay. uh, that these are are not out of part of the five thousand dollars that the town has committed because the town has committed money in next year's budget so the town might be coming in to help fill in the gaps at project close if there are things that we can't complete in time. And you have received some funds from, uh, I can't remember, Ted uh, Mark son, Alexander. Mark Alexander's son. And that's like a, a first installment? Yes. How much was that? Rosemary, do you recall offhand? About $4,333. So. Yeah, we're oh, kind of. Good to know. I was just wondering yeah. where we were, where we were standing and what we were projecting. Yes. Yeah, we're still we're projecting to still come in on cost. Most of the items that we're looking at, uh, we don't believe have been affected in the same way that construction materials were. Um, so we're we're hoping that that's going to be manageable, um, but we're not. We haven't in, we haven't started any of it yet. You know, we've just these are the first couple uh, purchases that are coming up. So okay. So these first two these first two costs that we're seeing right now are within that cash on hand. That we have. Yes. This this is paid for entirely by the donation of Mark Alexander. 
Very. Yep, I hear you. Okay. Okay, next item. Uh, culverts <laughs> for stock. Um, this is another one that didn't, I apologize that none of these papers for the quote made it into the packet. Uh, the culverts for stock, um, we normally keep a good stock of plastic uh, culverts on hand. Uh, we've gotten a lot of great use out of being able to deploy them kind of at a moment's notice rather than trying to make purchases or, or acquire them. Uh, we've been able to assist uh, in, through mutual aid some of our neighboring towns because we maintain a good stock. Um, so this has been helpful for, it's been our, our standard policy and it's been helpful a, a number of times. Um, we only have estimate, or we only have the prices from farm and garden. Uh, we'll do a little bit of digging to see if we're really missing out on anything, but to get all the culverts that we need, we will spend no more than uh, $14,802. Is that at least one of every size? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, in my report, there was a quantity um, of 815 inch sections or 24 uh, inch sections and 12, 12 18s and uh, 815. As long as we're covered, that's fine. It's within $200 of the budgeted amount. So if we ran tight, you know, by the end of June, we had to buy another one. I could probably swing it. I just these are for all the upcoming seedless projects with the grant projects and everything. The only reason I wanted to buy them early is Alan's going to honor the price that we were paying last year for them before the price increase if we buy them ahead of time. Gotcha. So the yeah. grant projects will re reimburse us some, I guess. Yeah. yeah, some of these will be eligible for reimbursement. There's uh, eight, eight culverts that are going to go into grant projects. So, you know, it's going to be reimbursed. There's 24 inches. Yeah. The chances are that's the best pricing here. They're going up, they said they, they worked on it, Trevor and Alan. They took a while to get back to me. They're going to be going up May 1st. Yeah. So we'll, you know, it's a lot of money. So we'll do our due diligence to look for other prices. But I I doubt we'll, we'll find a better price once you factor in the shipping that they're willing to do this for us before the price increase. Uh, but you know it's over five thousand uh, dollars, so we'll do our, our due diligence about you know getting numbers from another vendor. All right, uh, moving on, uh, plant mix and three quarter inch stone. Um, these I listed mud abatement as the code for these. It's really going to get split up under a couple different sections, but mud <coughs> abatement will be probably the biggest one of them. Um, we are using a lot of uh, both of these. Uh, you said we only had one or two more loads of three quarter inch stone and basically none on, on plant mix. Um, uh, before the meeting had started, Jason was talking about the, the <coughs> everybody's running out right now. Uh, Percy's is running out, NATO's is running out. Um, you know, we want to get kind of whatever we can. Uh, this is kind of a, a continuation of our uh, emergency purchase of, of getting as, as much of, you know, trying to build back up our stock in addition to the, the amount that we need currently. Is that $20,000 going to cover the extra 30 loads that we're thinking we need? No, this is just a replacement we had in stock. And uh, the only reason I was bringing this up to Brian is because you know, I agree with Justin for this year's price limit. They can give me yes. the price that is now is May 1st, going up 50 cents to $2. They don't know where it's going to fall. It's at least going up 50 cents a ton. Yeah. So the 20,000 the 20, to replace what we had, we, we'll have another bill at the next meeting for all the excess that mud season saw. Yes. All right. Uh, next up, this one's a little different. Uh, or no, this is the primary electric. Um, so the primary electric for the Ted Alexander Welcome Center. Um, 
the if you recall the the, the village is honoring their agreement that they made with us uh, for running the electric over uh, we have an estimate or a quote from Troy to do the work uh, that's no labor just the uh, materials used um, there is a little hang up on completing this project that uh, they want a permit from the state for crossing the state's right of way uh, that I'm working on with, with the state. Our belief is that we shouldn't need a permit if we're crossing over our road right of way. Um, so that's, that's our belief that we, we won't need one. The village won't operate without some guidance or permission from the state. So that's, that's what I'm working on securing right now. So this, we want to, we'd like to get this on the books, uh, but it'll, it might be a little while before we can actually break ground on it. So this is us buying the pool. This is buying the pool and the line. <clears throat> and the connection to uh, village power. Is there any chance we wouldn't be able to install the pool? The pool? Uh, how do you mean? I mean, we're buying the materials to do this project, but if for whatever reason we weren't able to do the project, whatever the reason was, um, what would that mean? I would imagine that if we really ended up stuck with the pole we couldn't complete the project we had to back off the whole thing um the village materials are going up like anybody else's they'd probably buy it back from us at the same cost i don't think i don't think we would have a problem working with the village if we ended up having to cancel this project what normally they would just take a pole out of stock and if they didn't do the job they would bill us for it Right, but they're billing us now, and they're not taking well, this it is out. A, this is an estimate, right? The work hasn't been done. The work has not been done, not and been done. they're not willing to commit to the, doing the work until they receive guidance from the state about crossing the state's right of way. But this is a bill. They are asking for us to pay. We would like to make a commitment to them by securing the permission for the project. We wouldn't. I don't believe that we would pay for it up front. You've got it in your order. So there is a little maybe miscommunication on, on that, but I don't believe we're paying for it up front. I believe that we are securing the permission to pay for it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't authorize paying the bill until the work's been done. Rosemary, is, did you, were you received for asked to receive a payment or to issue a payment I mean. the village will not do any work until payment is made that's their policy so they are asking for us to pay it's the same thing if you were to build a house and get yeah. if you want to be part of the grid and pay them they come to the work <clears throat> yeah it, it is the village I, I don't we have a good relationship with them i'm not worried about uh you know, I, uh, us, when we're ready to begin, you know, they've told us up front that they have a problem with us just having a belief and a statement that we have permission from the state that they want to receive that guidance from the state. Um, so, yeah, I, I think they're... Okay. Okay, let's move on. Okay. Uh, the last one, this is the one that's a little bit interesting. The uh, power washer, if you recall... Uh, Boy, it was November or even earlier. Yeah, I believe it was November you guys approved me to buy the steam heating pressure washer from Farm Bureau. And it was going to be $4,390.62. That one that they, that vendor they were dealing with still doesn't have the on the motor. So Farm Gardens took on another vendor too. So they offer uh, another heating device by different vendor. And the new price would be four forty six hundred, yeah, four thousand six hundred eighty seven dollars and seventy seven cents. So it's almost three hundred dollars difference 
Call me skeptical, <laughs> but I don't know if I believe the one month. If they were said next week, then I'd be like, okay, you have it in stock. But he called the vendor on this. He discovered uh, it's primarily to that side, but he called to figure out how long it would be. He's like, oh, I need all that information before I came tonight. He told him a month at most 40 days. I believe the vendor said that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's the new vendor, <laughs> not the old. <laughs> when we talked about purchasing a new one, the heavy concern was blowing ice out of culverts. But is it something used heavily in the summer? Or can we sit for six months and save the 300 bucks? We usually use it for cleaning our equipment and trucks up in the spring, get them all cleaned up. Yeah, it's been a lot of water. Yeah. But you've you've got an operational one right now. You, you don't. No, it's been Yeah, they all are crashed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there we have it. Uh, how would what what would the board like to do with these requested purchases? Motion to proceed on requested purchases as presented or less. <laughs> Yes, I, we'll do our due diligence on on. Yeah, you always do. <clears throat> second. Motion a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. I have it. Thanks, Jason and Moran and Rosemary for all your help. Thank you. Okay, next up we have the administrator um, report. And the first thing is a certain mileage, Brian. Yep. So, uh, what we've got is our annual mileage certification. This is so, this is we have so many miles of class two, class three, and class four uh, roads. We've had no changes to this this year, so it's just requires board signature. So Any would questions? the board like to approve the certificate of mileage? Motion to approve the mileage. On that note, I would like to have mobile select for me. Do you have a second? We have a motion. Do you have a second? I didn't hear what he we didn't hit the last part of what Kevin <laughs> said. Motion to approve the mileage certificate. Second. Those in favor? Right there. Uh, saying aye. 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 You won't sign it, and it's not. Uh, it's not like it's one big line. Those opposed. So you'll have to sign next to. It's kind of chaotic. No, I just have it. Thank you. Sounds like you just sign anywhere on the sheet. Uh, there is a little box. Okay. Paving projects. Uh, paving projects. Thank you. Uh, I don't have an RFP drawn up for you to review yet, uh, but we do have a couple sites that we'd like to target for uh, paving projects this year, and we'd like to get the form out uh, relatively soon. So I'll, I'll have an RFP for you to review soon. But uh, our most likely candidates are Clay Hill and River Road West. At Clay Hill, we did repave that rather recently, uh, but if you've been up there, there's uh, it's not holding up very well. Um, and we believe that the best way to protect our the investment that we made in that is to make the repairs promptly uh, and quickly to thank you uh to keep the the damage and the problems that are up there from getting worse okay uh the other location is river road west uh river road west right now the pavement's in pretty lousy shape uh, it's also inconvenient for 
uh, plowing and sanding because there's just a little bit at the end that's unpaved. So when we pave that one, our intention is to finish the length of River Road West. To the turnaround? Yeah. And that's not part of the silver jacket. <clears throat> No, that's this won't have any impact on the yeah. Um, do we have a what is our cycle for paving roads? Are they just when they start to deteriorate, or do we have a we have a uh we have a set amount of money that we dedicate to it, uh, and we have uh every few years we're eligible for uh, class two paving grants from the state. Uh, using that combination, we usually assess it annually of kind of what, what's most needed on any given year. Um, you know, we keep track of road conditions throughout the, the town about what roads are, you know, what roads need it the most. Uh, some of these like Clay Hill, it's not really the age <laughs> of the paving project. It's more the condition. Other ones, it's more related to their age. Uh, but go ahead, Jason. Clay Hill is so base that you know, they took it right down, they ground it, they graded it, they did a real nice job with the sub base, and then they come back a couple of years later and they did the overlay. And the overlay is delaminated, like when you were working with the potholes, it's lifting up sections, and Eric's seen that before uh, last year for protection. And when they did the top overlay, they didn't really crown it right, and it affects some residents on Clay Hill. So I'd like, that's one of the reasons I'd like to get that double so we can get. That problem, no, but for a couple of minutes, but are you just paving over it? Or is it no? I want them to take a two inches off it with a grinding old milling sheet. And when they do river road west, through, then do the overlay on it. So it adheres and it sticks. So it'll last for a couple of years. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, so for the past 30 years, the road has been increasing in height. The pavement has been increasing in height in our house floods pretty much 35 minutes now. The, the road wants to be paved from basically Brad and Orange Drive right down to our house. The ground is sort of cut. I'm not sure why. I have photos that was um, actually traced the yellow paint when the road was apart on it for the pavement. So it shows all the yellow paint sort of crowning the way it should. And as soon as it gets to Brad Moore's old driveway, his apartment complex, everything comes into our driveway. And I'd be more than happy to show the photo that shows that. Um, the town did put a little burn fire driveway to try to keep the water from flowing. Or a garage or our basement. <clears throat> Over the years, um, the wind and the snowplow has sort of mowed that down. And the pavement has increased in height again. So it's very working. Um, this fall, Jason came up and spared us by putting the stakes in, which works really good, by the way, um, to keep our house from flooding for the generations. So if Clay Hill is destined to be paved again, I would love to have a meet up with the town for the town contractor and sort of fix this issue for a draw. Um, it could be a swell of a cage on the shoulder uh, as it goes by our house to catch the water to have a home. It's starting sort of to damage some of the snakes. Sounds from Jason, it looks like from Jason's reaction, he knows what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, we were able to talk about you know, the best ways to make it. 
question I just throw out to Jason and his crew for helping us come this far. Most of the different, but you know, that's the worst of this winter and uh, physical showers. Uh, I'm nervous yet again about the water flowing into the island. Yeah, fair enough. Thank Thanks, Scott. Yep. I did. Follow up to your <clears throat> question about the plan. Mm -hmm. um, two questions. When uh, Clay Hill is class two, when, when would be next be due for a class two paving grant? I'd like to go out this, I'd like to apply this year for next year's construction season on a class two paving grant. Um, we haven't selected the road. My first choice on that would probably be uh, River Road, or excuse me, Railroad Street. Uh, but you're right, Clay, Clay Hill is also owed. Uh, we received one for Plot Road. When was that? Last year. Yeah, I mean, I guess we have to rely on you folks to tell us where your major problems are. We, we did just maintain a Paving less, you know, to your point, which was, you know, kind of a capital capital plan. I, I would suggest that there's value in doing that and not to add things to your list of things to do, but it, it probably is. It, it, that list also said when we had paved the last, you know, the road the last time uh, to help give us a little bit of an idea of, you know, what roads might be in need of. Yeah. Extra work. And I, I will say for years, we have under budgeted the amount that we need to maintain the pavement on the roads that we have. Say nothing about adding more pavement. Um, you know, our, our budget for pavement is pretty minimal. That's what, that's what we, we do have a list, and that's one reason I wanted to jump ahead on Clay Hill and move it up just to not move to the sub base and have it there is a few other roads. I mean, Brian talked the last two grant, I think, is more beneficial on railroad street the amount of work that's going to be involved. If we do railroad street, I mean, really, you're talking about it's just my opinion. I, I don't think it makes a lot of sense to pave railroad street unless the drainage is dealt with, if, you know, the storm drains, and that is a village issue. So I just throw that out there. Well, I, yeah. I agree. That's, that's what me and Brian talked about. We didn't use the paving budget last year because we had the grant. So we got last year's budget for this year's budget. And that's why we talked about these two. And not to do anything on Railroad Street yet because it wouldn't make sense to patch or fix something that we're going to have to tear back up to do all of that infrastructure underneath. One second, Scott. Eric, did you want to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to add a little bit on Railroad Street that. If we were going to be looking at that, it really should be a coordinated effort with the village because of the storm drains. But that is also going to be a very, very expensive endeavor because that road is a cement road and to remove all that cement is going to cost a lot. That, that, that in of itself could be a huge grant just fixing that road. Yeah. Yeah. That, that similar to the plot road that, that was one where we're not going to get a great bang for the buck. We're, we're going to spend a lot of money to do a short section of road. Um, and that's kind of what we're anticipating in uh, what we anticipated on plot road and what we're anticipating again on railroad street. So uh, we think that's a great candidate for a grant to supplement our local funds. Um, so we have project meeting coming up. Yep. Project focus. And I feel like paving is an important part of all of that. So we should probably add that to the, you know, everybody bring it. It's one of those topics. Um, and we'll talk about the prioritization of um, maybe updating plans or perhaps a uh, paving strategy, whatever that means. So it'd be great to have you at that meeting, uh, Jason, if you don't mind. Scott? Yeah, just to add to Karen, things like that, I know that we have the UPS students for doing study on Clay Hill. And they were, you know, sort of like, oh my God, to the drainage that comes across the road below my house. And if you're going to take that up, you should sort of 
trying to figure out if any of that culvert has to be dug up because that's incredibly deep because the amount of fill that's been put in over the last 40 years on that road. Is there any kind of how to understand it of what that entails, for example, those grants and culverts and their way of um, I, I guess I don't have a specific comment on that, but we usually do uh, incorporate culvert replacements when we're doing a paving project. Uh, so I, I think that I, I expect that if they need replacement, that would be that we would be doing that. I believe the one below your house. I'd have to go back and look at the the two monitoring sites that they selected. They selected uh, a couple of years ago. We worked with UVM. Uh, they wanted to study uh, the effectiveness of the best management practices that the state was recommending for uh, culvert maintenance and replacement, uh, especially the outfall <laughs> area from a culvert. Johnson. Uh, we were able to get Johnson selected as one of the sites for the study. So we looked at two culverts on Clay Hill. Uh, they made all of the changes to bring it up to the state's best practice recommendation on one of the culverts. And then on the other culvert, they didn't make any changes so they could, you know, make a measurement on, you know, these two culverts have similar loads and similar circumstances and, you know, we can look at what does the best practice, the recommended best practices, how much of an impact does that have on, on the local environment? So uh, I have to go back and look at the results of that study. I don't think I can quote it uh, freely, but. So what are our next steps right now? Next steps right now, if we're good with these locations, uh, I'll draw up the RFP uh, that we'll send out for requests on this. It'll get pretty detailed about you know, we, we want grinding, we want to reduce the road surface by this much and then add back in uh, material uh, to top it off. If there are culvert replacements that we're contracting out, that would be part of it. Usually the culvert replacements we do ourselves while it's torn up, but whatever we're contracting out with the provider at that time will get worked into the RFP. Are there any concerns about River Road right West or Clay Hill? Or any missing road that anyone can think of? I guess I'll ask you first, Eric. Do you have any comment? No, I would go with the recommendation from Jason and Brian. Okay. Anyone else? I would it would be great to get River Road East dealt with a different year of the trustees. Did you say east, Kevin? River Road East? Not this year. Uh, yeah, I heard that. I heard at some point, but, but you said east, not west, right? Correct. I said east. Yeah. This is another reason I didn't. We talked about that. Yeah. That's kind of the way we came in up there. Seven so Okay. Okay. It sounds like we'll look for our fees from you. Yep. Great. Uh, next up is the library memorandum of understanding. And you've got a copy. What we're looking for on this is we want to update the contacts for the town administrator, emergency management director, uh, emergency management team member and select board designee. Brian, is, is this a memorandum of understanding that already exists or yeah. is this a proposed? This already exists with the. Well, it changes the new board. Everything. Yes. So it was in effect last year, but it's not in effect now. No. So would it be would it be appropriate to suggest a possible small change? You can. All right. Well, on page 
two, where it discusses larger projects, the bullet that begins larger projects. I'm a little uncomfortable. This, this seems to me to commit the town to use the building the reserve fund as the means of funding that. I would just be more comfortable if we replace building reserve fund with normal budget process. It's words to that effect. And then on the third page, the last bullet, which begins at this time, it will be determined which projects. Um, and it refers to as capital expenses. So if we make that earlier change, I would say as capital or annual expense. Okay. Yeah. Um, Sabrina, how would you feel about those changes? I understand you couldn't accept them necessarily on behalf of the trustees, but. Yeah, thank you, Aaron Jackson, for that. I think um, to me, that language is more based on the town, how you guys want to work that. So accepting, I mean, the main purpose of this is just to understand with the purchasing agreement who was responsible for what. So I'm confident with that. And yeah, I think it's fine. Okay. Great. To me, it doesn't seem to change the responsibility of it, which was the greater intent of the document. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, right. Okay. Um, can, can you send me the word in that you had for this? Yeah. So we essentially just need to, so we have our EMD, who is Eric. Um, it looks like there's not a line for signature from other folks, but um, if the board is comfortable, I could accept contingent on the changes suggested. I could sign. Um, but if you have other, what's going on, Mark? What are you thinking? No, I'm peaceful. And peaceful. Perfect. I have lots of thoughts, but no. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yep. So, do we want a motion to accept? So, I'm making motions. No, I'm, I'll move who we accept it with <laughs> the um, changes that Duncan suggested. Motion. Would you want to sign? Chair to sign? Authorizing the chair to sign. That's if you want it to second. You can go for it. Second. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second. All those, uh, any discussion? Uh, so we have a question of audience. Oh, thank you, Scott. Um, yeah, the change is simply to, instead of calling out a specific fund, uh, reserve fund, instead talk about um, it falling into our board spending practices, essentially. Um, and the second change is along those same lines. Instead of calling out a reserve fund, it's basically saying an annual budget or the reserve fund. Uh, I just offer a comment or a suggestion. At the same time that you're approving these changes, uh, you might as well approve adding the names to the document as well. The, uh, well, we have a motion on the second on the that floor. Already discussed those, so they would be part of the board's team. Okay. Do you need named? I mean, well, I guess the question for the trustees is. That's the current is, from the library on the top of the next page. If the board approves the role, the role is listed out, do you need the name in the memorandum, or is it sufficient just to have the role listed, knowing that those are clearly defined within the town documents? Um, we approved it. We were content with it, just having the goals um, in the included our specific titles. Um, but we were wanting the current ones to sign. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Fair enough. Okay. And that's how we did it last time. Okay. So I think we're good with not having the names listed. Okay. Okay. We have a motion with a second on the floor. Um, all those in, fi in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, and that's unanimous. Thank you. 
Thank you all. Thank you. All right. Um, one of the other questions we put forth in regards to this was previously Nat Kenny was our selected kind of designee, but this liaison. And I had asked, we asked Brian about that. Maybe not the moment to do that, but if we could have a selected person that the library's kind of communicates with, is that going to be this selected um, person? We could ask, does anyone have an interest in being the trustee liaison? You'll do it? Yeah. You have a liaison? Congratulations. Thank you. Don't we need a. We better add his name <laughs> in writing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, and as far as doing our um, springtime walkthrough um, in the library, um, should I just contact you guys? Yep. Now that we've got Mark on the hook as our, our other person, we'll okay. work between us to schedule the time. Great. Great. Okay. So that was a perfect order of question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's the springtime walk through? We just go and kind of walk through the building. You didn't read this, did you? I did. I actually did read it. <laughs> um, it's just an opportunity for us to kind of see the state of the building, what's going on. Uh, and <laughs> talk about any concerns that we or or the library trustees have. Great, I did a lot of work on that building in the early eighties. <laughs> you had someone to blame. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we lowered it. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the next. All right, uh, ATV. So the our statement here is. Uh, we've got a document, the VASA Trails Program Project Resolution of Commitment from Municipality. Um, this is a little bit unusual. It was signed by uh, Hugh Albright uh, as the road foreman. Um, and I've got a number of questions about the uh, about this document. So I would like the board's permission to consult with our attorney about this. You got mine. Yep. No concerns here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, with your general commitment, I don't need a specific motion about it, but um, yeah, I, I, by practice, if it's not an emergency, I don't engage with our attorney without the board's consent. Sure. So, so you have it. Thank you Good. for asking. All right. So that's quick. Moving on to number four, update on ATV ordinance and scheduling a dedicated meeting. So we've got a, uh, let's see, our attorney has weighed in on, on the question that we had asked about kind of the process question about um, our current ordinance and permissions granted by prior boards for uh, the paved section of class three and class two roads. Uh, the recommendation from the attorney is that the board takes action to assert that the permissions are not in line with the ordinance and those uh, permissions are repealed. Um, when we make changes, if we make changes in the future, it should be done by updating the ordinance or amendments to the ordinance. Okay. Um, thank you for that update. So this is a follow up from the last meeting we had to get clarity on where we stood. Um, yes. Okay. So we, thanks for that update, Brian. That's vaguely helpful. It's a little vague, <laughs> but still helpful. Yeah. Um, we, I think we should have a dedicated meeting as Duncan had previously suggested around all things ATV ordinance and where we want to go with it. Um, and really spend some quality time talking about it. Um, so I propose that we set up a special meeting for the 1st of April, uh, 6.30, sounds like a good time for everybody. Can I ask we go a little bit later and just do seven? Okay, I don't have a problem with that. Any concerns starting at seven? Weather committee. Weather committee. Right. You do realize that's April Fool's Day. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. do this on a Saturday and start at six o'clock in the morning because we'll be here at midnight anyway. 
tips. But we're not going to be here till midnight. I promise you that. Absolutely. You don't have to do everything in one meeting that calls for it. Um, so, seven o'clock, April first. What are you thinking, Duncan? Well, I'm one, I, I'm I'm good with the I'm good with the time. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm wondering though is. Given what we said at our last meeting, we I think we thought that we should try and get the information out to the ATV club and users that our ordinance was going to control. Um, and then the question got raised of you know the previous action of board. So I guess I'm wondering if, if we shouldn't just take the action tonight to. codify that the ordinance controls rather than any prior approvals, which then gets us to the point of dealing with the ordinance. Um, okay, I'm gonna ask, and I'm gonna tell you before I ask, <laughs> and if we get too deep in conversation, I'm gonna ask us that we not discuss tonight, but, um, how does the board feel? Because because we could be here for a long time if we get into it. And I would rather spend our time dedicated on ATV discussions in a meeting uh, rather than you know being halfway through our agenda at ten o'clock tonight for someone. Um, but how do the, how does the board feel about acting to send that communication out around uh, current use of roads? Today, TV club. I can wait till April first. I'm allowed on the roads right now. Anyway. Although I'd rather have done some overweight trucks. Do you, Do you expect this April first meeting to be where we will take be taking action or more informative? I think for the public and for us. Yeah, I think that for April 1st, I would look, and this is really up to the board, so just my idea is here, but I would see us potentially take action, it depends on where the board lands and whether or not we want to take action mm -hmm. to do what Duncan is saying, saying and stand behind the ordinance and not the additional board decisions or not. I think we should make a decision then and talk through all the implications of that um, and also move into discussions around how we want to proceed um, with the ordinance and whether or not we want to make changes to our existing ordinance. So I think it's a two agenda item, uh, two item agenda. And what I've been saying is correct. They're not allowed on the roads now. Yeah, April 15th. Well, they're running the roads, right? There's, there's no pro, there's no seasonal prohibition. Yeah. No, uh, there, there is not actually a seasonal prohibition on when the ATVs can run or not. In general, their season, ATVs are not common during the off season, but there, there's no prohibition about they can or can't run during certain times of year. Uh, but they are much less common at certain times. Like okay. now, I, I haven't seen any. I don't think, Jason, have you seen any ATVs out there? A few well, a people have, but uh, okay. Eric, did you want to? <laughs> yeah. Eric, did you want to say something? Yeah, uh, I just, I guess I don't see why we couldn't do both. We could take the action tonight of uh, removing their access to the highways that are not identified in the current ordinance. And then when we meet on Friday, we could start looking at the, uh, the boilerplate ordinance for ATVs that the, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns has. I think that's a really good boilerplate to start from. So I think we could uh, start this thing moving, just notify them as a, if we take action tonight, that the roads are no longer open, that are not identified. And then uh, Friday night, we can, uh, the April 1st, uh, look at, you know, the new uh, boilerplate ordinance. Go from there. I can make it easy by proposing a motion. If it gets Go a second. for it. I was going to ask if there's a motion. All right. So my motion would be that the um, 
in accordance with the attorney's opinion, uh, we should firmly state that the ordinance controls and we'll have our ATV meeting. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Second. Okay. Discussion. Board discussion first. Oh. Scott. Yeah. I'm a little concerned that you guys are going to be taking action on this because it wasn't really, really uh, detailed in the agenda. Actually, the agenda says uh, there's actually a desire to meet later on. <laughs> The next official <laughs> is you can't make a motion to vote on this. So what's the point of the agenda? I'm wondering what you have. So, so Brian's a notice that we're going to have more comment on this. So now if you have more comment on this, thank you for that. The, the comment I guess I'll make, the reaction I guess I'll have to that is that. While I understand that there's not a lot of detail in the minute in the agenda, it is listed as an actionable item um, for what that's worth. But every item is listed as an actionable item, and we don't have to act on the majority of them. Right. So it's we don't big, have to. That's pretty true. easy way to just put A next to everything. Yeah, there has also been a desire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So not Fair enough. How do you feel, folks, with the motion on the table? I think passing it will make the next meeting more efficient. <laughs> I don't think it was more than there's plenty of people that would have been here from both sides of this item that that was going to be one this way. Okay. So is are there any withdrawals of motion or second? <clears throat> Who do we have a second on? I think it was Mark. Yeah. Or here, both of us second. I asked. <laughs> I mean, we do have some legal opinion here, and you know, I think maybe we should follow our attorney's advice. Okay. Which we specifically requested we in our request. last board meeting. Um, I'm, I'm still comfortable with the motion. I think it's, I think there's enough in the agenda and warning to cover it. Okay. So we have a motion on the floor. Any further discussion? Rolls are these rolls. I understand what the attorney's saying, but I haven't heard one time that the club came here and said it was for out of town people or anything like that. It seems like the general consensus was they want to connect one side of the residence of Johnson with the other. I understand that previous boards allowed that, not legally apparently, but I'm just ripping this out of their hands with everything they give. Them. Just a statement. Sure. Heard. And seven. Okay. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Nah. Okay. Roll call. Eric, how do you vote? Aye. Mark? Aye. Evan? Nay. Nah. Duncan? Yay. Okay, you guys have it. Thanks all. And um, we will have a meeting on the first and there will be plenty of information. I've been working on compiling information, yep. working with Brian. We'll have a lot out there for everybody uh, for that meeting the first. So keep your eyes open if you're interested. Um, okay. All right. Next up, uh, we've got the shade tree preservation plan. Um, so chief function of this plan is about helping define and uh, define the role and the scope of the tree warden. Uh, if you recall, the tree warden statute says that the tree warden uh, 
has authority over shade trees without a real clear definition about what shade trees are. So this plan will help define which are, what are our shade trees, what does that mean, and what is our planning for these uh, going into the future. Um, I've got a number of representatives and our tree warden here, uh, representatives from the tree board. Uh, so Sue, do you have anything you'd like to add? Oh, the description of what the plan is for? So they made new ones that are worse. Including the state, knows what they're doing. I uh, that advisedly because there were a couple questions. Uh, state like rates of red so they decided to get 10 towns to um, work with them to get that preservation plan. And they're going to take those 10 towns and make it into one big boilerplate plan. And we finished ours. Uh, it basically restores the dreams of the two boards that they used to be. Pictures that trees that were specified in here by all these properties, these properties in the rights of rights are protected by the two boards. If somebody wanted to take a plan that's not a part of the tree or a plan, they would have to get permission in the hearing. Um, they can explain that part of it. But pretty much that's what it is. They want us now to designate exactly which trees we want to protect. So that's what we can. And then your protection is all the trees on all municipal properties, and all the trees in town right away on Swamp Road, and over Hill. And your rights of way. All, all trees in the right of way. So property owners couldn't do what they want with their property. So they, they can't have to the future. So they need permission to do if this pass like this, they would need permission from the tree warden to do what they want on the property that they take out to cut that tree in the right of way. So the right of way is 25. What about our road crews? Do they only they're only allowed to cut trees that are dangerous? Same goes, except for Ashley, who did the three of the plans, but the whole thing is something that has to be put in terms of the same thing that they can't accomplish. You may not be aware of it, that has been the law all along. That anyone who cuts the up until last November, anyone who cuts the tree is going to be able to do um, that would be a new one to make. For sure. I didn't interpret the the, the existing law. I'm sorry? I didn't interpret the old law that way. It was eight. Yeah, that's well, why I was corrected because it said all trees within municipal rights of way were in the land. Well, it, it, the jurisdiction of the tree board. That's how it was expressed. It, it didn't say all trees within the right of way, but it said something vague, shade which, trees. yeah. And it didn't, and there was no definition of what a shade tree was. Right. So some legal interpretation of it read it as all trees. Uh, and if I remember right there, are, I know there were a number of court cases and I don't think even the court cases were really definitive about what the definition of a shade tree was. Uh, so the, these Im the, the law has changed, and one of the ways in which it's changed is this opportunity to have a shade tree preservation plan where we define what we believe the role, what we believe shade trees to be and what we want the tree warden to have responsibility for. The reason we picked out those three trees is is because we get so much feedback on on, on, on 
Understood. It just seems costly and work prohibitive for our current town employees and property owners. Did you say it sounds costly? Costly and work prohibitive. Can you explain costly? I'm a <laughs> Sim simply speaking, right? Uh, you know, the road used to be shaded on both trees where my grandfather's car was. They logged that all out, sun got in there. That thing's been great. I'd love to see a little bit more open sun and breeze in certain sections of roads so that we don't have to go and spend 40 some one thousand dollars by the time this is all messed up. Of your money, my money, his money, her money. Um, and I also don't think that, you know, if our road crew is working at two o'clock in the morning. And they go and cut down a tree that, in their opinion, may have been might have been a hazard. And then the tree board is going to come back to the select board and say, "Well, that was a shade tree." And we don't think it was, you know, a hazard. Well, I'm not there at two o'clock in the morning. I just, I don't also believe that we should restrict the rights of property owners as a select board. If we had zoning in town, maybe we could do it. Yep, sir. Sure. Um, so I would hope the town crew wasn't making a hazard tree fall on a live tree at the clock in the morning. You can't see the whole thing. If it's hanging over the road, that's a whole different situation. Uh, this is not as limiting, I think, as, as you might think it is, in that it states in the plan to go for a ride with the road format every year and identify potential hazard trees. That way we don't have to do this on an on-call basis. That's for the established crews to do it as well. I'm not out here trying to make this more work than it is. I think we can streamline it really efficiently and easily. So that we're all on the same page and when those guys are doing their work, they, they know what they're doing and where they're headed and it's not a, not a big deal. Uh, that said, I'm, I'm happy to be on call whenever. Not a big deal. I think we can, we can work around that. As far as the landowner issue goes, we have a plan for a public meeting to uh, solicit input. Uh, we had one, <laughs> we had a little clerical error and we didn't distribute the actual draft plan. So we're gonna have to redo that public meeting. Uh, really what we're asking for here from the select board is to, for the select board to hold a, a public information meeting, um, a hearing, probably the, the city board, the city team meeting before the select board meeting. To solicit further public input. So this is a draft plan for everyone's comments and questions, and we're going to be looking for more comments and questions so we can craft it. Just looking for another standing spot in the meeting, I guess. Well, um, we have volunteers we should support. Is my first comment, and secondly, if you're soliciting information, um, I think that is an important objective if that's what the objective is and it sounds like that's what it is right now um it's also a requirement of cooperation with SDR with the state you have to have a, a public hearing and a public information yep i actually did read that i read a whole bunch of stuff on this <laughs> uh okay duncan I have a bunch of questions <laughs> and i don't know that i mean we've got 10 minutes allotted for this so we're probably not going to you know, I, I'm my own personal opinion is um, this isn't ready for a public hearing yet. Um, I think we need more discussion with with you folks. Just a couple of quick questions. Um, the the plan, the draft plan says specifically that the designation does not include municipal forest land, including town forest, but then it lists the Prindle lot, the Goma lot. Um, I don't even know what the scenic area on Route 15 west of town is. Is that a piece of town property? So I'll clarify that list. That's my description. Uh, and that is the picnic area on 15 on the way out of town. Town doesn't know that though. According to the, the I pulled all the all the um, 
parcel layers up for CPI towns parcel back that were either town of Johnson, village of Johnson, or Johnson town up in three categories. That's where that list came from. Some of them were little teeny squares that are listed as town owned. Uh, happy to reconcile that, but that's the data source that was used to compile that. Uh, that was out there in the public as far as uh, Johnson town home up. Did we reconcile that as a matter of practice? Either of you know? No, I don't believe the it. Is that the island that we own? No, that's not the island. It was a picnic area on the side of the 15 past the lawyers across the brook. Where they did that right work. Oh. Yeah. oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I didn't. Um, okay, so regardless of whether they yeah. own it or not. Uh, to be done. To be done. Yeah. Exactly. It sounds like there may be some reconciliation. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps. So it, it, I still have the question about the Goma law and the and the Prindle law because up above it says that those are not specifically um, regulated under this. The other part I'm learning about, and, and I know from prior experience that the village doesn't have its own um, tree warden, or they use you perhaps. I can't remember how that works out. Um, but the, but then it talks about. You know, our plan talks about village-owned property. I I would think at a minimum we'd want to have the trustees weigh in on on this. And then it talks specifically about the about Route 15, which was part of the tree planning process for the Main Street project. I know that the statute specifically prohibits. Um, implementing a tree preservation plan or shade tree preservation plan on state highways. I know that the stipulation dealt with um, the planting, but that was, having been involved in that, my, my memory may be less than perfect, but I'm pretty sure that was a specific language which AOT required essentially that the village develop a plan to maintain those plantings, including replacing plantings if they died, etc. So I, I'm wondering if that really even needs to be in this plan because it's already covered under that agreement between the village and the trans. Um, and then I, like like Evan, I, I I have some degree of concern over listing all trees on those three highways as big shade trees. I mean, is, does that mean a, a maple whip this big? Is, it, is that a tree? And is that subject to removal, um, you know, either by the town crew or the property owner? Another question that you bring up about size, it, it's specifically prohibited brush hogging. Yeah. Well, that is maintenance. Our equipment, so it's where's that? Go ahead, no. Yeah, hold on. I'm, I'm lost track because there's a bunch of different things. So, no, it's just rolling feedback. What are the signs? No, I think your point is a good one. And actually, I've been thinking the same thing. There's clearly a lot of different pieces of feedback in different areas of feedback. Yeah. So the board, I know that uh, I know that probably most of the board at this point has read the whole report and has specific questions and specific bits, bits of feedback. I know I do, and I could probably spend a good chunk of your time on that too. Um, but rather than do that, um, does it make sense for us to individually send you our feedback? How do you like how do you want to receive feedback? Uh, that's probably the easiest, I guess. Uh, I mean, if you're gonna have a public hearing, you're gonna have Presentation, so that was sort of the idea there. Um, I guess if it's more efficient for the board to email specific questions, that would work. Uh, I'm always happy to answer them. So. I just asked because I think that to Duncan's point about going into public meeting, to have a warned meeting to discuss this, if we have a whole bunch of questions about it, we're not going to be the only ones. And are there opportunities to? potentially make changes, maybe not. I guess it's really up to what you want to present um, in advance of going to that meeting. Um, it's a draft. 
to the draft. Yes. To the best point, I, I would love to go into a meeting where we're vibrating in sympathetic resonance, <laughs> so to speak, and you know, making a making a public presentation that we can all you know support. And I and I have a feeling it would, you know, would not be a. I can tell you right now, if it, if I went to a public meeting and I was being asked to vote on this tonight, I wouldn't vote. On it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't vote in favor of it. I wouldn't vote in favor of it, accepting it. I'm sure that I'm sure that we can get there. Um, yep. And that's what that's what I think you're trying to say is. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. I, I think there's lots of different angles that are people are coming from, uh, and we'll try to funnel them to you, and maybe we could you know, get you back on our agenda next meeting, see, you know, what your thoughts are on some of that feedback, whether you incorporate it or not and the reasons behind it. Um, and then we could follow up with a public meeting, you know, once we feel like we're, you know. Yeah, some of it just may just be wordsmithing. Mm -hmm. Well, that was the purpose of the training for the next, to get it in front of you, to look at it, see our progress. Uh, we've had a small problem that we're working on it for, here. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, appreciate the feedback. Yeah, we appreciate we volunteers. Things, <laughs> yeah. so thank you, thank you for your work. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's on the phone. Yes. She does not have her hand up. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, and if for folks on Zoom, typically if, if somebody wants to speak on Zoom, we ask that they reach out in advance so that we don't have to you know run across the room. Uh, but. Okay, great. Well, thank you everybody. And uh, I'll give you my feedback. Sue, do you want to go to, go to you? Or do you want to go to know who, who's the recipient? Who should, yeah, who should get it? Well, that's a good one. So Jimmy. So Noel, you got it. We, I do. Would it be helpful for the board to send it to me and kind of collect it? Nope. Nope. I'm not going to say no. Like, I'm, nope. it's, no, if, if you it, don't, no, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. So I'll give I'll send give us, all of you Noel's email, email and take myself out of that. Just a request in that um, regard, if you could put the subject line as um, Shakespeare Preservation Plan. So you got it. Sort them all by that one name. That'd be super. Something related to it. You'll set that up as a spam filter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Thank you all very much. Thanks for the hours that goes into all of this. Uh, yeah. Volunteers make our community function well. So thank you. Okay. Yeah, it's a super difficult plan, and I I really appreciate the work that you've all put into the, the yes. preservation plan. It's it's yeah, very, uh, I don't want to say necessary, but on that order of, it's a really important thing for us to work on and develop. So thank you very much for your dedication. One of the things that really motivated us was the fact that in the past, um, there was a woman, not now, whose axiom was just cut them all back. One of them all, they don't need that. And we run into that more recently with other volunteers. And we run into it with And the trees, you can't replace the ones coming down the pictures. So uh, we've got this for picture gloves. One thing I valued Noel's um, expertise on was working on behalf of a landowner who had a shade tree that they wanted protected, um, you know, from either a utility, you know, to, uh, mm -hmm. the maintenance practice or whatever. So I think that's a really valuable piece. And I don't think the legislature did a real good job in cra crafting <laughs> that legislation mm -hmm. that they did. And hopefully this plan can, you know, help, help address that. We do have a clean window that we have clean uh walk through the village with uh e trains and state and the goals and uh, and we're all gonna go straight. I mean hopefully we'll have this plan from the franchise. We'll also state miles and details, so maybe they can apply that knowledge. 
do look forward to it all coming together. <laughs> all right, great. Let's let's move on to our next agenda item. But thank right. you all. So uh, next up, the Conservation Commission is requesting an email address uh, to have an, an official townofjohnson.com email address. Uh, what's the board's pleasure? Uh, it, it, they are not free. It, we, it does cost us, uh, I think it's $5 a month. So it's not a prohibitive expense, but it's not free. Uh, it's an ongoing obligation. If we need a motion, I'll make a motion to uh, authorize the establishment of a conservation commission email address. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Yeah. Ayes have it. That's okay. <laughs> Congratulations. Right. You have an email address. Um, so, Brian, I imagine that you'll yeah. work with the folks who. Lois, I'll work, work with you on who needs access to it and, and uh, what exactly the. I don't think we want to do the whole conservation commission ad. No, I think we'll have two names on it. So. Yeah. Thank you very much. Enjoy. <laughs> so, the next piece up, also Conservation Commission. Conservation Commission has updated their mission statement. Uh, and would like the board's kind of comments and feedback. Uh, that's in your packet. Uh, I didn't put page no packet page numbers on this, but it's the heading titled Johnson Conservation Commission. Uh, would you like me to read the mission statement? Sure. Uh, the mission of the Conservation Commission is the stewardship of public lands, advocating for the protection of all of Johnson's natural resources for present and future generations. We endeavor to strengthen relationships between the people of Johnson and our natural environment, to instill shared responsibility and awareness within the community for the protection and preservation of the environment, and to achieve balance with the present and future responsible growth. The commission's charge is to advise the select board, planning commission, trustees, special interest groups, and individuals on matters concerning Johnson's natural lands and natural resources. Johnson's lands and natural resources. Yeah. Um, uh, I do have one bit of feedback, um, which is the, I knew I had something, I can't remember what it was, on the very first sentence following the semicolon where it says protection of all of Johnson's, I think just protection of Johnson's down like has a nicer flow um so i would just strike all of of all yes with the same it has the same meaning same intent. Um, can i can i ask lois since lois is here by all means um is i i think that initial part of the mission statement was has not been radically changed is that right yes. so the the change really is the piece that begins with request for process yeah. but the actual um our original mission statement was much shorter and we built in some clarification which you know, offers goals and the charge because it seemed like the community didn't have some of the community didn't have an understanding of what the conservation commission was all about. So this is written by the all nine members. It just seemed like the time to freshen up and then go to the request part where we like the select board to make it their policy, the formal comment from the Conservation Commission, be a required component of any development idea or proposal or nonprofit. We want to be a part of what's going on. And this process is a, is a way um, of being. So the request is separate from the mission. And I think the first thing is the mission, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, are there any concerns with the mission statement? 
Or she's yeah. got in the top portion. Yeah, everything yeah. Yeah. above request or process. Yeah. In in your edit, your edit is fine with me. Okay. Eric, do you have any questions, comment? No, oh, sounds good to me. Okay, so it sounds like I don't think you need a motion. I think you just have no, a blessing. Yeah. Uh, so by all means, yeah. you have a new mission. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for doing it. Um, in request for process, it sounds like, Lois, on the request for process that you're you're requesting a policy. Am I correct? Or is that a loose terminology or is it a strict terminology in the in the use of our policy? Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. I think if I've been reading between the lines, I think you're strongly encouraging us to think of you if there's a project involving municipal lands or natural resources that we should be seeking your you know guidance and input. I mean, I think I'm certainly hearing you. I think you're heard for sure. Um, I just personally have some really big ideas about communication. <laughs> it's totally out of turn in my role right now. Um, but um, the word policy reads strong. Like, mm -hmm. you know, that's the first thing you zeroed it on. Look, are right. you looking for a formal policy? And I think communication would be free and they could probably have some awesome input. On development ideas when we get down the road without changing things here and there. Um, but if we're looking for a, a loose, you know, kind of non binding thing that, that just gets communication going, any developmental idea is pretty specific, you know, formal comment, which I guess if they have email, it's pretty easy. But we can't necessarily hold up every project that we have if it was a time sensitive item. Not all of them are. I'm just saying sometimes there are some. So we, we have to approve something for a playground update at a park. We got free money from the state. So we had to spend the bacon before. So I can't give you a perfect example of every scenario right now. <laughs> Well, I think a good example is the Ted Alexander Welcome Center. Uh, you know, is that what the uh, Conservation Commission is looking for being looped in on? The biggest uh, development project we got ahead of us is the Jewett property. Um, is that something that you're looking to be looped in on? I mean, it's sort of the horse is halfway out of the barn and stuck. <laughs> 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 where, where I would generally agree that that I would want it to be the policy of the board. I, I don't think there's a lot more important thing to me than conservation of our natural resources. And I, I would make it, I would agree with this. I think it should be formal and I think they should be involved in well, even the Jewett property. I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying the word policy. So if we get a scenario where we need to make a decision and you don't bring it up, well, they from you know, the Conservation Commission comes back to you and says it's your policy. You know, we could change very easily, just change that to you know, best practice or practice or something. But if we have a formal policy, that's where the dollar stops. 
if it was a time sensitive item for applying for a grant, we would just not apply for it. So if I can offer, Eben, you, you were trying to think of, of examples and a good example of this would be last year when we had an opportunity to apply for uh, congressional earmarks that our runway for the amount of time when we found out that those were opening and when the application was due was about two weeks. Uh, you know, that we had to go from, you know, no idea that, th that anything like this was going to happen to delivering a proposal to, uh, I think it was, uh, Peter Welch's office that opened it up first, but whoever the first one was, we had no run up for that. That was very suddenly, you know, we want projects that are, you know, in excess of $500,000. Um, so I just wanna like, so I think the ask is pretty simple. The ask simply is think about the conservation commission. I don't think anybody disagrees with that. And I think that we all agree with that and support it. If the ask is something more than that, then let's talk about it, I guess. I would just ask if it is something more than keep you in mind and inform you, please be clear about what the ask is beyond that. And um, I'm just sitting here thinking, you're just one of many commissions committees in town and we can probably be better about this regardless of who we're talking about. Um, so uh, that's just what's running through my head is like, how do, how are we not always the middle person is one question I have. And if there are suggestions on how to make that happen, I personally would love to hear them. Um, and also sometimes we should be the middle then and let's be that, you know, and that's what we have this forum for. Um, so I appreciate you bringing this up formally. I think it's great that you did it formally. Um, it got us all thinking for sure. And um, please keep helping us <laughs> be there. Um, Denise? Yeah, so can I hope it's my fellow member said straight along. I think we are asking for more than just in And And I think um, the ask is a word I, I think that our charge is much more, it's not about negating progress, it's much more about strengthening progress that will preserve what we all hope to hear for future generations right there to do it. And I wonder, now that we, this is a little humor, now that we have an email address, we mm -hmm. can also say that um, <laughs> under Lois's charge for, for leadership, the way we communicate with each other is really fast and rapid fire. So we can get a project at a, a short window of time. I feel confident that we would be able to communicate quickly and respond quickly. I just wonder if if uh, yeah if we could all agree to reach for more than just to be brought up. Would this be a practice, a policy and or a practice? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I think uh, when we came up with this and uh, heard that, um, the, you know, one of our biggest things is we do not want to stop, hinder, you know, I'm not going to chain myself to a tree. I'm not going to do anything like that. Um, not but, you know, we don't, we're not trying to stop the machine, however squeaky it is. To move forward, um, we're trying to be part of the machine as it moves forward. We're trying to be part of the of the process instead of you know coming at it from an end or or trying to trying to speak for the voice of things that you know now don't have a voice because the process has already started and the grinders already going and you know so it just being being part of the front end and in the know and uh, that's what we're what we're hoping for. Thank you. Scott? Yeah, um, I don't have any 
you know, worse than issues with word policy. But what I am asking, um, Ken used to be on the planning commission, and we oftentimes they were like really out of the conversation with all these new policies and things that were sort of putting together. You know, the planning commission also has something similar where they have a, a policy to be notified of other things going on with the pipeline. Yeah. I guess what I'm after here is we have lots of commissions and it would be, I think, really beneficial just for clarity to have the same paragraph and maybe the mission statement after that. So people who are volunteering all the time maybe have that same placeholder, whether we call it policy or not, that's up to you folks. But I think due diligence is needed here for the other committees. <laughs> but um, of course, it's any development on any town property. And so, you know, we've done lots of little projects. Is that, I mean, you're looking at a lot of different groups asking for lots of little things. Um, you know, we took out part of the grass to put in a bigger parking area. We put in, you know, which benefit the library. Is that the kind of stuff that we feel like in the of the project? And so I would just like to clarify. I think those are all very fair statements. And I think the ask, I'm gonna ask it something of you too, is if you can help us define what that means to you. Um, Cause I have, this, I have similar questions. Like there has to be a line somewhere you can't be involved in everything. So um, how do we help define where that um, tipping point is? And um, yeah, and there's, to your point about like being part of the process, not at the tail end, like what does that actually look like uh, for you and for whoever else is involved, right? Like the other aspects matter too. Um, so I really do appreciate you bringing this to us. I think that's important that we're having these communications. And I think the next ask is, you know, what does that mean to you? Um, and put yourself in the other person's shoes and what that could mean to them too. Um, and I, I personally would like to hear more about this, and I would like to apply this to more of our volunteers. And I'm not going to just say committees because I think it, it's bigger than a committee itself or a commission itself. Right. Pistols at dawn. <laughs> Pistols at dawn. I was thinking of something. Recreation wants um, to put in miles and miles of trails on town property. They want to keep these on town property trails. Uh, they want the bridge across the whole mile that is for many reasons that we have already explained. The answer was. And the flooding town will be impacted by the department from the water. And um, we got one side by that last request to go and see if that could be about it. Um, it's things like that that really bother us because so many months ago, they'll go about it in that place. And, and yeah, nobody speaks. Our belief is what can really help you. We don't see the environment. It's it's us, and sometimes we feel like it's not people like you want us. Yes. So yeah, I mean, my personal feeling is with all things, there needs to be balance, and I hear you. Um, and there are many different perspectives. <laughs> so. 
So, I mean, I think my ask is still the same. Like, what does that mean to you? And, and I think our um, directive at some point will need to be, well, what is that process for conflict resolution? And I think that process for conflict resolution is probably us as a board. Um, yeah. So um, it's probably that, that simple, but um, Denise, if you have something really quickly, I think we need to move on. So we're not here all night, but let's go ahead. So we, we had talked about um, in our meetings, we talked about coming up with uh, a list of themes or um, topics that would bring more organization to a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that list would change anything here, um, but I think it might paint a more clear picture about what it would look like. Perfect. That sounds great. Would it would something along that line potentially result in a I hesitate to use the word draft policy, but I'm gonna <laughs> um, that Thank that you. that you could submit to us um and you know begin the conversation or formalize the conversation? So, so this was things that we talked about. Well, yeah, yeah, but 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 the idea that Beth is expressing as well of of what does it mean to you to be involved you know what what values would you bring to that and, and what would the process look like for that what what would a policy look like um, if you want something more formal what would and i'm not even asking for something formal i'm just asking for something that would inform us you know to help yeah but i heard i heard at least a couple comments that sounded like they were looking for something a little bit more formal then so that's that's the only reason I'm they could certainly propose either i'm going to just say that we should move on um but i think you understand the intent of, of my ask anyway and it sounds like a lot of us have a similar uh perspective so yeah so can i I'm sure it's late and I don't know if it's on me. Um, but what I was sharing is that we have thought carefully um, and with consideration about what our priorities would be to our ways, how we would look at a particular proposal and what environments it might be the most um, sensitive issues we would be looking at. Not what we would be asking. Sure. I think it, just to sum it up, the way I, I think of it in the in the macro mission is um ecologically Fair enough. Okay, let's move on. But thank you. Now that we're talking about all of this, let's talk about mowing. <laughs> Sorry, but it is the next agenda item. So next up. Uh our mowing contract. We've been with Roberts and Sons for uh, quite a few years. Uh, they've maintained being uh, that they have maintained their same cost for a very long time. So we hadn't been too highly motivated to go out for a new contract. But it has been quite a few years. We really should seek a new mowing contract. Roberts and Sons is also increasing their prices by about 10% for the coming year. So that plus it's been a long time, it's worthwhile for us to pursue um, another mowing contract uh, bid process. I've made a quick draft of an RFP for this. Uh, it's a little bit complicated because we do share services with the village. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a little bit tough, but why do we share services with the village? I can't honestly answer that. We share we share the contract. They they have they have specific parcels that they, but technically they don't have to choose the same contract. No, they can choose their own. But this this building, for example, is town and village owned, mm -hmm. so. In that sense, we're yeah, yeah. We we could just do our property and shared property, and then leave them to do the rest on their own. Oh, with shared property, they have to sign off on it. Yeah. Yes. Are we heard? I see. 
Yeah, good point. The village or kind of a theme. I don't think they'll have any problem with it. I was just thinking that, like, why wouldn't we just take the contracts? That's what's kind of what was going on in my head. Um, but then when it came to village only own property, that. But anyway, I don't care what we do. Just so, how would you like to proceed? I think the intent was that we were hoping to have a better rate if we had a bunch of mowings within the community, and they they run all over and do every cemetery and the the village springs and the historical building it they go all over the town and village but i think we should loop them in anyhow we should loop them in anyhow he said that he just talked about the different places in the village and that we should loop the village in it's gonna be a lot of money I'm okay with that. I've got a couple updates that we need to make with this. Seeing Sabrina reminded me uh, that the library is not listed as one of the properties here, and it should be. Yeah, I was saying I said motion to approve circulation RFP. That's true. You did say that. Do we have a second? We have a motion. Do we have a second? Yep, second. Oh, yeah, second. And then I'm adding the library specifically. Yep. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Ayes have it. So, Brian, you're good to proceed. All right. I'll move on that. No, I'll very briefly add. Uh, uh, in the section on the selection of contractor, I added a little bit about our ability to negotiate a final contract with the person we decide to award it from. All con if all contracts bid on the same thing, the contracts should be comparable. We should be in, in pretty good shape for this, even if we have to edit it a little bit after uh, it goes out. Madam so Chair. I would suggest that you make a courtesy call to the chair of the trustee indicating we're planning on doing this. Okay. I, I believe Evan said that it was contingent yeah, I said on their approval. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was doing that same comment. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Uh, ARPA, the quick review of the rules for ARPA funding. Um, the big takeaway from this, we've had a little bit of discussion about it, but the there's a number of uh, uses and things that we could dedicate the ARPA relief funds uh, for, but one of the things that's incorporated into the final rule is uh, that we can claim a standard rate of up to $10 million of lost revenue. And that will not, if we claim the ARPA funds as lost revenue, we can bring them into our general fund and use them for, use them like general fund. Um, that is, that would increase the flexibility that we have with this. Uh, and make the, the money a lot, open up a lot of doors about how we uh, invest that money. That would allow us in particular to use those funds then as a uh, non-federal match for pursuing other grants. Um, the big takeaway from this that I'd like, that, that's the kind of the big takeaway is that that is one of our options and that's a very appealing option uh, because the flexibility it allows for us. Uh, the other thing would be we're doing our planning and prioritization meeting uh, at the beginning of April. Um, we should be pursuing public input and talking to, to people about how are we going to invest this money. You know, the, I've got some ideas, but I really think that we should solicit public opinion and, and public input on, on the process. This should be a primary purpose of our prioritization meeting. I agree. Um, 
and yeah, there, there's this is mostly a uh, this is mostly informational. Uh, you know that I wouldn't recommend that we take any specific action on it at this time. Um, Can I just ask a clarifying question? Yep. It says um, revenue loss due to the pand pandemic, either according to a formula or by claiming a standard allowance of up to ten million dollars. What is up to? How are you defining up to for a standard allowance? Do you know? Uh, it's as long as the loss that we're claiming is less than ten million dollars. So in our case, it says up to ten million dollars. So we're we're entitled to six hundred and sixty thousand three hundred dollars per person per census. So that would be yep. the number we would use. Okay. We're not okay. post million. No, we're not going to get that. Right. Well, that's, we, right. Okay. that's what right. I was missing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we can't propose. Oh, for it. <laughs> yeah, we we can't propose more money than is allocated to us as ARPA fund. Okay. But we could allocate up to uh, ten million dollars or our total ARPA fund, whichever is less. In our case, the the total amount is going to be a lot less than ten million dollars. It's going to be okay. less than a million. Yes. yes. So you strongly recommend that we at some time decide to move this into general fund. I do. Um, even if we use it for an approved action, uh, even if we land on a project that would be approved under the general fund or under the ARPA funds, mm -hmm. the overhead maintenance of claiming it as lost revenue and then spending it on a project is much easier than going through the ARPA process and keeping it as dedicated ARPA funds. And there's no chance they're going to like audit us to say, prove we lost this. No. That's, uh, that's part of the legislative finding. Yeah. 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 Is that they won't do that. Yeah, that's what that's if we take the standard allowance. Right. Well, actually, there's or we could use the formula and the formula would still probably I haven't run the formula, but the formula is still pretty generous. I would like to know the difference personally. If the overhead is going to cost us $30,000 in a year, but we're getting that $30,000 plus, you know, 30,000 in like people hours. And we're getting that thirty thousand plus back rewarded. Is that overhead worth it to have somebody who's, you know, a contract employee to do that administration administrative function? I can do a little bit more digging about kind of what I. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not saying it's yeah. the right way to go. I'm just saying, how do we know if we haven't run the formula? Well, the, the formula, the formula in particular is just a different way of claiming lost revenue. And, yeah. and we, we don't have enough lost revenue. Yeah. Okay. E even if it was, even if it had provided enough, we don't need it because we're definitely less than $10 million. We're getting the same number no matter which path we take. I believe so. Without having actually run the formula, I think we would arrive at the same number. Because I think our limiting factor is going to be our dollar eligibility, that we're not eligible for that many dollars. Yeah, right. okay. um, so I think either way, we'd arrive at the same number. But it's also not worth it for us to worry that much about what the formula might give us, because we're definitely less than 10 million. Eric, do you have any questions? Yeah, I, I agree with Brian. Um, we're definitely less than 10 million and our losses, I don't think come up anywhere near $660,000. Yeah, you'd have to demonstrate that if you use the formula. So I don't think we could demonstrate that. Yes. The other thing to think about is if, we, if you, if you what, what Brian is suggesting and I agree with is that we use it as an offset to the budget for lost revenue which in essence is going to give you a year end surplus, roughly equivalent to the $660,000 that we're eligible for. Mm -hmm. That 
If we don't do that, you can apply the money to a specific project that has to be committed by 24 and built by 26. Whereas if you incorporate it into the budget, you have essentially used your ARPA funding in your reporting is limited right. to that. So there's, that's okay, another like, big advantage to just rolling it into yeah. the budget, the general fund. Thank you, Duncan. That, yeah, that was what I was trying to describe about the overhead, that even if we decide on an eligible project, it's less work for us to recover the money as lost revenue and then do the project. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, uh, and then it's treated as, as year-end surplus which then begs some questions about, you know, how we spend it and how that gets done in the budgetary process with public input and all that, but you know, it's a different question. Yeah. yeah. And, and Beth, that's where you will have to stand and explain to Walter why we want to spend it in a certain way. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to recruit you for that day. I'm feeling ill that day. <laughs> um. But yeah, we have several years in order to commit the money to anything, whether it's a project or lost revenue. So we've got plenty of time to collect public input on potential projects. Okay. You know, I've got a few of my priorities. We'll discuss that at the prioritization and planning meeting. Perfect. Good. Thanks for the update. Thanks for sharing what other communities we're looking at. I appreciate that. Part. Welcome, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Jason. Good night, Jason. Okay. The cannabis licenses. So, yes. this is honestly a, going to be a pretty brief uh, update because there is not much. Uh, there's not much that they've given us. Uh, but I wanted to give you an update because there was a, there has been action at the state level for the pre-qualification part of the process. The pre-qualification, what that is, is that allows folks who are interested in obtaining a cannabis license of any type, whether it's the cultivation, processing, or retail, they can go to the state and apply for a pre-qualification. That is going to be the, the biggest feature of the pre-qualification is the background check and making sure that they are eligible for the criteria that the state has set forward about who can obtain a license. There is no local component at this stage for the pre-qualification period. To be clear, there is no process for the local portion of this at this point. Yes, that's the next part is the the way that the local municipality will give feedback in the future about licensing that doesn't exist yet either. So the, so this this does not have a local component at all it for pre qualification, but we also still don't know what the local process is going to be when we are involved. Um, so it's like it's state though. So right now, somebody can apply for pre-qualification through the state. Yes. They don't know when they'll go back on that pre-qualification, but that is the step. That is, is the step. After they get pre-qualified, assuming whatever background checks pass. They will still have to apply for a license. Through the state. Through the state, and part of that process will be local approved. For which there's no process yet. Yes. For which there's no process. <laughs> and no money, by the way. No yeah. process and no money. Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah, but I expect more. Uh, I have been able to open up conversation with a couple of representatives at the uh, Cannabis Control Board, which is the state entity. Uh, so that has that's gone well getting a little bit more feedback from them, but there's still a lot that they're working on. And so they weren't able to provide a lot of clarity about what the future is going to look like, but they did clear up the question about where, where the process is and what our role is <clears throat> today. And our role today is we don't nothing. Know. <laughs> well, our, our role today is nothing. We do know that 
100% clear that, that there's nothing for us to do with the pre-qualification. Eric? There's nothing to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so do we okay. presume that if at some point they promulgate a rule for the local cannabis control board to issue a local license that if the applicant has not been pre-qualified, pre they will be ineligible to get a license? No, uh, you do not need to do the pre-qualification. Oh. Okay. <laughs> the assumption is, and this is just an assumption, this is not official policy. The assumption is that there's going to be enough people asking for licenses when it is first opened that they want to clear some of that backlog by having a pre-qualification process. So that once they open up the licensing, <clears throat> they can process some of those licenses faster. So if you're interested in obtaining this, the pre-qualification, probably all it's going to do is make your license application go a little bit faster. But it does not, it's not a requirement to the best of my knowledge. <clears throat> And there is no process for the app, app, the actual application at this point either. Correct. Okay. Uh, that. Uh, Great. Sounds like we have nothing more to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> let's move on. Yeah. Let's move well, on. I, I think we had a question from the audience. No, I was just gonna. I was just gonna say that following the basically they're kind of using it also as a litmus test to see how many people really will be applying for licenses and locations and, and getting a better understanding of who out there might be wanting to start this process. So it's a way for them to gather that data so that they can then have a little bit better understanding. So just, just so. Yeah. Thank you, Dean. Yeah. Okay, uh, next up. Uh, we talked a little bit about kind of changing the way that we are uh, reviewing orders at the beginning of meetings and, and speeding that up. May every week. Um, <laughs> I could give you a list. I could nominate <laughs> you to do the <laughs> review of <Thank> orders. <laughs> I I think there's value in doing it the way we do it. It equates to six and a half hours a year. We're in the meetings for that sometimes. They're really bad. I'm close to that. I mean, it, just today, I mean, we we're talking about purchasing stuff for the Ted Alexander Welcome Center or approving and spending money. But if it's just that or just Mark or just, okay, or just myself, I might have that answer, but how would the other board members even know what's going on? Well, are responsible to some extent. I mean, you and Rose are doing an incredible job. I think from my my view, it's actually very important that Rosemary and Brian are not the last for people to see this and we just trust. It's not that we don't trust Rosemary and Brian, it's that we don't know who will be in their seats 10 years from now. Um, so I think that it can't be. When Beth and I first got on the board, just kind of passed them around. Everybody signed them willy nilly. And then there was something that happened that changed that. I think it was for the better. Um, not really advocating for any particular way to do this, but a couple of things to think about. Um, let's see, the, presumably if we appointed one person to be kind of the, the point on this, there would be an opportunity rather than reading through the orders, there could be an opportunity for that person to report to the board if there was anything that they saw in the orders that they thought was worthy of comment. That they thought was important to them. Yeah. You know, the important to the board members or something might be important to another board member. Yes, that, that would be, yeah, that, there's still a, a, a downside to, to doing this is, is you are reducing the amount of oversight. Less of it would happen in an open meeting uh, where there's more opportunity for public comment. What is the second option that you were suggesting? Um, or I, the, the second thing I wanted to bring up is we would, this would not change the plan purchases and the board's 
role in uh, the our procurement policy that we would still be reviewing all purchases at a board level of over a thousand dollars. But I mean, just devil's advocate here. But if that were the, so, assuming that were the case, and we had one person or not anybody looking at orders, um, that plan purchases is very different. That's planned. That's not actual money going yep. out. It's not quite the same. Yeah, it's it's definitely not. And again, I don't want to advocate for a particular. I think this is very much a board decision about how you want to review orders. And I, I don't, apart from encouraging you to review orders, I don't want to weigh in on on how yeah, you do it. Stance. Yeah, that's a good stance to have. Um, Eric, what are your thoughts? Well, I would just say that uh, as a select board, one of our biggest responsibility is uh, judicial responsibility with the people's money. So I think we knew we need to do the due diligence. You know where I come down. I've never been on a board that this feels like micromanaging people that we pay a lot of money to do a good job. And if um, I've just never been involved in a board that was looking at details this small. So I, I'm in favor of either having somebody from the board do it or um, not doing it at all. I don't think we have a choice of not doing it all because yeah, the because statute requires now. us to, to do something. I, I'm okay with it right now. I will tell you that I think there may be ways, I think ultimately our concern is, is um, preventing fraud or the theft of the public money. Um, my take on that is that implementing something such as a purchase order policy would go a long way to prevent fraud in the future. And it is something that we should look at um, and think about. And if we had, if I had a greater confidence that we had a system in place up front that was preventing fraud or theft, then I would be more inclined to have a single delegated select board member work with Brian and Rosemary. But absent that, I think it's 15 minutes of our time that's probably well spent. I had the same exact opinion on a purchase order processing system. Um, but how would that prevent but I, in a sense? Because you don't actually pay anything out that doesn't get to that purchasing system. Like you have a workflow in place that stops purchase order payments Which is over a certain still amount. It's a human element. It's not just a computer. It's just because you're computer. still going to show purchase order. It's you not can, that hard. Where there's a will, yeah. there's a way. And I trust all of our employees. I don't want them to feel micromanaged. But we owe this to the taxpayers. I, I agree with you, Evan, that um, not, nothing is foolproof if you, if, you, if you enter the human element in the. Uh, if you've got somebody that's bound and determined to steal from you, it's going to be hard to implement a process that's going to absolutely prevent that. From even, even with us reviewing it. it would even with us reviewing it. Yeah. If somebody wants to steal, they're going to. Well, that might have come out of a certain scenario. Mm -hmm. But I do yeah, think a purchase order yeah. policy at, at a minimum would give an employee a lot of pause. If, if, if I knew that I had to call and get a purchase order number and get that, that purchase pre-approved, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna think twice about you know taking that item and throwing it in the back of the truck and bringing it home. I'm not worried about keeping all these people honest. One thing I like about this, uh, it happened just tonight. We're going through, going through, going through, and Beth goes solve. Mark or Duncan, Duncan said maybe we should purchase ahead of time. It's getting more expensive next year. That wouldn't happen. We did stop twice. It. I was thinking that older way. No, it's not about micromanaging. It's about knowing what's going on. Asking Financial questions, awareness. really. <laughs>
But that's certainly something that Brian and Jason could have come to know. And we most of probably time, already have. I, yeah. It, it was the. They always do. But it's a nice question. It was. Yeah. It's still all right. Okay. So I hear you saying you want to keep as is. I, I would say until we have perhaps other financial controls in place, I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable with continuing as we are. Okay. Is it a ton of work for you to highlight what you do, Rosemary? I mean, that, that makes it pretty quick. The, the first time we did it, we went over every invoice, and a lot of them are just reoccurring invoices. So that's when Rosemary went through and highlighted everything. That's okay. I'm peaceful. Okay. Status quo is thanks for the conversation. It was a good one. I think it was a needed one anyway, actually, regardless of wanting to make a change or not. Um, okay, food shelf bathtub. Let's All right. This one quick. Bathroom. This one should be fast. No, bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> it just says room. Uh, folks at the food shelf are interested. Uh, right now, uh, the bathroom inside the food shelf has a bathtub in it. Uh, the <laughs> bathtub is currently filled with empty boxes. They'd like to just take the bathtub out uh, and have more room for storage. Okay. Who's paying for this? Uh, it, they have not asked for any money, so I'm assuming that food shelf or volunteers are are doing it. As long as they're insured, whoever is moving it is insured for liability. I would support them doing whatever they need to do to get a bathtub out of there. Eric? I would agree. They are asking the Board of Trustees also, uh, because it is a jointly owned building. So they're ahead of us on that, but... Oh. Okay, any objections? The, the food shop was ahead of us, not the trustees. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean that as a dig to the trustees. I just meant That's okay. the food shelf is ahead of us that they want to ask both. We, for. we read between the lines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think, I mean, Duncan, any concerns? Go for it. What did you say, Eric? Go for it. Okay, there you go, Brian. All right. Marvin Awards. Last up, Marvin Awards. There's one more thing after liquor licenses. Rosemary, right? Yeah. So Marvin Awards and liquor licenses. Uh, the Marvin Awards are coming up again. Um, do we have any candidates for the individual or uh, project-based categories? So can we just say, uh, can we say the Marvin Awards are coming up and think about people? Because I haven't really given this much thought. I'd be happy with that. The date. What is the deadline? I should not have that because I'm only once in two hours. Say it here. So there's it's April. Uh, we will have. We, we will have another at least one more meeting before it is, but I don't remember off the top of my head what the date is. And it's important to re recognize there's there's really two awards. There's a project and there's a person. Yep. Um, so last year there were three, weren't there? Uh, well, we had we had three um, nominations. The Historical Society got a honorable mention. Is that how they did it, or? No. Um, yeah, there was a project award. There was there were three awards. There was a project award. There was community service, lifetime achievement, and there was one other. Yeah, the last uh, one. they often a lifetime achievement or something else is. It's not uncommon for them to have an additional award, um, but the 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 nomination categories are just the two. Right. But yeah, it's not uncommon for them to say. You know, we also want to, you know, if they get two really good candidates, um, especially in the case, I know uh, the Romero's got the Lifetime Achievement Award yeah. a few years ago because they you know, yeah. thought it was, they wanted to recognize them in a little bit different way. And I believe they did something similar last year. Uh, 
for somebody who wasn't a Johnson resident. And I think last year the the Tatros were the town's submission. And Lewis. What's that? And Lewis. Um, I submitted that as a LCPC board member of the Historical Society. Oh, yeah. oh, and, and, Lois and also Lois. Yeah, Lois is a person. Yeah. Yeah, Lois was a, our, our person, and I think our project was Jenna's house. Jenna's house. Yeah, um, so the deadline is April 29th. Thank you. So, should we um, submit? Uh, who should, as an individual board member, who should, Beth, who should we submit our ideas to? Right. Uh, I don't care. You need to... How about both of us? Yeah. Right. It's on both of our radars. What's that? I got an idea for a person. Perfect. Okay. So we'll yeah. have them by our mid April. That'll give us time to get it in by the end of the month. Yep. April meeting. Okay. Cool. I really hope we, we can um, nominate for both projects. I mean, the Jim Marvin Awards are kind of Johnson um, important. They so. are. Mm -hmm. Yep. We'll put as many submissions in as appropriate. Okay. Excellent. Liquor licenses, Rosemary. Yes, I have one for downtown pizzeria for their second class and third class. And one. Didn't we just do downtown? No, we did moves. Did what? We did downtown. Are they, um, does their license have uh, outdoor service? They have not submitted the outside consumption yet. They don't really have one. any. Yeah. Well, I guess I do have that outdoor season. It's like very popular. Yeah. Like now, it's a couple yeah. days. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 I would forgotten all about that. It's been a while. Yeah. 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 Yeah